One of my favorite things about fighting games is how different each one feels, even though most of them can be boiled down to something as simple as this. Everyone's got a health bar and your goal is to beat up the other person until they flop on the floor. Pretty simple, but how each game gets to that point can be very unique. Even things that don't affect gameplay like appearances and personalities make games stand out. A big part of it is being able to identify and relate to them. Whether you're a tough person with a soft heart, or just straight up crazy, there's a character out there for everyone. But sometimes your favorite characters might not be in your favorite game. However, what if I told you you could bring them over to that game, but also any character you want? even ones that aren't in fighting games. Today, we're going to look at one of the greatest fighting games that technically doesn't exist. But before we do, today's video is once again sponsored by Opera. If you want to make sure things like tabs aren't occupying too many resources, then Opera GX is perfect for you. It's a browser that optimizes performance to fit your needs. GX Profiles is a unique feature that allows you to pick the essentials for your browser and focus on what you want. If you're a streamer and you're worried about accidentally showing your personal information, there's a streaming profile that you can choose that takes care of it for you. There's also a potato profile that strips the browser to its most basic parts to completely prioritize performance. And you can always go with a custom one to add and remove whatever you want. Anytime you create a profile, you'll see it show up in your taskbar for easy access. You can also tell which one is which by the color. If you're browsing at night and you don't want to get blinded by bright pages, Opera GX gives you the option to force dark pages so that doesn't happen. Another nice feature is that the sidebar has your social media integrated into it. I can check my Twitch, Twitter, TikTok, Discord, and a lot more, all right here conveniently from the sidebar. And if you're also hesitant about switching because you'll lose your extensions, Chrome extensions can be added to Opera GX just like any other browser. Opera GX is also available on mobile under the name GX Mobile, so you can browse anywhere on the go. So if you want to have an easier time browsing while playing games, click the link in the description to download Opera. Thank you again to Opera for sponsoring, and I hope you guys enjoy the rest of this video. The Japanese word Again. translates to infinite in English. It also happens to be the name of a fighting game. Well, not exactly a fighting game. I like to describe Mugen as the Schrodinger's cat of the FGC. It can both infinitely be any 2D fighting game, but also none of them at the same time. Mugen is a free game engine that thrives off of community-driven content. Think of it like Rivals of Aether's custom workshop, but on steroids. You can customize everything from characters and stages, all the way to things like sound effects and intro animations. But the Mugen we all know and love today didn't always look like this. Let's take it all the way back to July 27th, 1999. A company by the name of Electbyte releases the first ever beta for Mugen on the MSDOS. To give you an idea of how old that is, computers like this ran on MSDOS. Games like these used it, and you needed a disc like that to play them. It wasn't until November 2001 when they had switched to Linux and had plans to make a Windows version as well. But unfortunately, they discontinued the project and closed their site in 2003. However, a private Windows beta was given to a small amount of donors and was eventually leaked to the public. The private beta had a two-character roster limit and a few locked game modes. It's safe to say that it was a very early showcase. But with everyone getting access to the leak and Electbyte no longer around, it didn't take long for people to hack it. In 2004, a hack was released that removed limitations like the roster limit and fixed other bugs. Over the years, Mugen would continue to receive updates from third parties like support for high-resolution stages and characters. That is until they made an unexpected comeback in 2009, where an official full release of Mugen was finally published. It featured many updates with notable ones like HD resolutions, victory screens, and even language updates. Eventually, a Windows-only version was made fixing some smaller issues, and a couple years later, the final version of Mugen was released in 2003. This is the one that's still being used today. Now, what makes this engine so special? I mean, it hasn't been officially updated since 2013, and it uses outdated software. Well, if you couldn't guess already, the community behind Mugen is massive. Because of how long Mugen has been around, it's had a lot of time to develop a fan base. Groups such as Mugen Fighters Guild, Infinity Mugen Team, Mugen Archive, and many more have cultivated sizable followings around the engine. Not to mention the vast amount of resources readily available at your fingertips. And if you're not interested in building your own game, there are thousands of different polished games with themes ranging from anime all the way to this? I can't tell what's more distracting, the background or the actual characters. While looking for examples to showcase, I genuinely didn't think there would be an MS-DOS character, but I guess I shouldn't have underestimated the internet. Is that Bill Gates logging into his network? Like imagine if this was the first fighting game you ever got introduced to. Like there's just so much going on, I can't tell what's happening. I honestly don't know how people come up with these characters, but I'm all for it.
An unexpected byproduct of this game engine is that there's actually a community dedicated to AI sports betting. Salty Bet is a Twitch channel where hundreds of people gather around to bet on CPU matches. And trust me, people get really invested. Now as amazing as Mugen can be, it can also be the worst thing you've ever experienced. It's very unlikely that most of the Mugen games you download will be balanced, so it's best not to take most of them competitively. But with that being said, I want to share some of my favorite characters I've come across. First you got McDonald's strongest warrior Ronald McDonald with his infamous Happy Set Super. Then there's the CEO of Chicken himself, Colonel Sanders, who has some of the deadliest chicken punches by the way. These two famously fought each other and I'm honestly surprised with how fleshed out their moves are. Like people actually took time to make them fully usable characters. But who can forget the classic crossover of Homer Simpson vs Peter Griffin? Truly a battle for the ages. But in all seriousness, you really can't find this much variety of creativity anywhere else. The fact that it doesn't have to take itself seriously allows for some of the funniest but also the coolest matchups. Although one of the biggest things holding Mugen back is its lack of support for online. If you want to play with your friends, you're going to have to use something like Parsec. But recently a newer game engine called Eichmann, I hope hopefully I said that right, has basically become Mugen's successor. It can support assets from Mugen, but it also has newer features like online play. Games like Knockout feature this engine and it looks very promising so far. The netcode as of right now is delay based but hopefully rollback will be added later down the line. Hopefully one day Mugen gets another update but unfortunately it's not looking too good since their page is down again. But who knows? Electbyte has a history of disappearing and reappearing again once people decide to update the engine themselves so there might still be a chance. Anyways I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Before you guys leave though I have an idea for a stream. What if we do our own AI tournament and you guys get to pick the characters? We can either pick the characters on stream or in discord beforehand and then during the stream we can do bets on who wins. We can decide on rewards or something like that for whoever wins the whole tournament, but yeah, let me know. Follow my Twitter and join the Discord for updates, and if you want bonus content, you can head over to my Patreon. As always, I hope you guys have a great day. Peace.